we are now going to start with the first uh, session of uh, first thematic session of india smart utility week 2024 which is uh, digitalization of utilities uh, digitalization roadmaps and digital twins so to start with the session we have our moderator mr richard schomburg from iec over here and uh, i would uh, like to uh, call him on dais Please, sorry sir. mr richard schomburg is vice president standardization at edf group and edf corporate fellow over the past years he has held a number of management positions at edf group research and development and has designed multi million dollars complex systems for critical operations I would now like to call upon uh, Dais, our chair for the session, Mr. Sanjay Banga, President, Transmission and Distribution, Tata Power Company Limited. Thank you so, so much, sir. A very warm welcome. Mr. Sanjay Banga leads the transmission and distribution cluster at Tata Power and is responsible for the PNL account of eight board managed companies, uh, with uh, which includes the four Odisha Discoms: Tata Power Delhi Distribution Limited, Tata Power Ajmer Distribution Limited, Tata Power Trading Company Limited, and Power Links Transmission Limited. Thank you so much, sir, for joining the session. a very warm welcome um we have our theme presentation uh, by mr andres carvalho ceo and founder cmg consulting usa uh, unfortunately uh, mr carvalho is not uh, uh, in in india in in here with us but uh, we have a, a recorded version of that presentation with us will play uh, during the session now i would like to invite our panelists uh, for the session uh, uh, one by one mr vijay panpalia vice president product engineering sew a very warm welcome sir Mr Vijay currently uh, serves as uh, the VP of product engineering at SEW as I informed a leading AI platform company specializing in delivering digital customer and workforce ex work workforce experiences to global utilities we have with us Mr Sunil Kumar Singh head of business segment from Larsen and Tubro a very warm welcome sir ladies and gentlemen please after lunch let's give everyone a really good hand mr singh leads the ds team in the technical delivery of the company's solutions to clients globally he has more than 3 decades of demonstrated success driving multi platform initiatives in the electric transmission and distribution sector and for energy intensive industries throughout india and uh, the association of southern east asian nations a very warm welcome sir we have mr murli baggu with us laboratory program manager national renewable energy laboratory a very warm welcome sir mr murli baggu is uh, as i informed lpm for grid uh, integration at nrel through his work with uh, us department of energy's office of electricity and grid modernization initiative program mr baggu has been shaping the direction of power systems research at nrel we have with us mr ajit kumar kesavan senior vice president grid automation hitachi energy india limited a very very warm welcome sir mr ajit kumar kesavan uh, uh, is working with hitachi energy india limited and business head of the grid automation business unit within hitachi energy india and in his role he is entrusted with the responsibility of leading strategic developments with the industry thank you so much sir for joining we have mr abhishek harsh dgm and engineering from bses yamuna power limited a very warm wel welcome sir mr harsh holds a be in electrical engineering from pc chandigarh and has a 14 years of experience in electrical distribution company we have with us mr tarun batra 
Head Digital and IT Tata Power Company Limited, uh, Mr. Batra is a management professional with cross-functional experience of more than two decades of entire value chain of power sector in the field of information technology, operation technology, GIS, customer services, business process engineering, project management and much more. A very warm welcome, sir. We have with us Mr. Mukesh Vadhva, Director Ecosystems and Partners, GE Varnova, with over 27 years of experience and 24 uh, years of experience with GE Varnova. Mr. Mukesh is well versed with digital electrification software technologies in IT and OT domain. A very warm welcome, sir. We have with us Mr. Jagdish Chitre, Chairman, Kigs Limited. A very warm welcome, sir. Mr. Chitre has played a key position role in organi organizations such as TCS, Elstom, and Landis and Gare. He has set up dozens of greenfield projects in energy meter and allied uh, products with end-to-end -end solution. And we have Mr. Saurabh Kumar, General Manager, BSES Rajdhani Power Limited uh, with us. Uh, he's experienced project manager with a demonstrated history of working in the information technology and uh, services limited. Thank you, sir, for joining. And we have with us Mr. Anand Vardhan, who is representing Centrica. Uh, he's a director at High Tech Facility Engineers, which is the Indian counterpart of Centrica uh, PLC UK. And uh, he leads business development and client engagement across domains such as industrial automation, machine vision, IIoT solutions, and power quality. So along with that, I would uh, like to hand over the stage to our moderator, Mr. Richard Schomburg, to take the discussion forward. And uh, hopefully, we'll have a very enriching and, uh, and a very insightful session, everyone. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you very much for the for the introduction, and uh, I'm sure you are all here because of the the theme of the session. See, digitalization and uh, digitalization of uh, of course the the operations, the assets, but also the roadmaps and digital twins. And okay, so. Those are uh, fascinating topics, and, and this is really one of the uh, key priority for, for many, many uh, practitioners and players in the uh, electric uh, landscape. But of course, the theme is very, very, very large, okay? And also, we have on the dais a, a huge, uh, capability, a, u <laughs> a, a huge set of people with a lot of experience, diverse viewpoint because we have the chance to have utilities represented and uh, also solution providers. And we have also NREL that I, I, I'm not I would position NREL a bit on top of all of that, more, more neutral, but of course with the same goals. So having said that, uh, my concern is to actually make the best experience for the audience because two hours is quite, it is quite long sitting and, and listening to, uh, to 10 very different people, different viewpoints. This might be very tricky, it's going to be a balancing act. Uh, I wish that we're going to just all team up, of course, on the dais, but also with the audience. And therefore, uh, I, I don't, personally, I, I would not wish that we have just a uh, one side uh, communication for two hours, a tsunami of information get, getting, getting there. Then, the consequence of that is that I would, I would recommend that here on the dais, we we give a time credit <laughs> to, to each contributor here in the team. Uh, and the time, the time credit is five minutes. Let's start with the time credit five minutes. Some might have 
slides already prepared, then I would uh, kindly request that they, they use them at best, meaning that uh, not going from slide one to, to the last one, but they can jump over. The key is five minutes. If we do that, there is a good chance that we will be able to entertain questions and then enter in the most interesting part of the session. Do we have a deal? Okay, here, here the team is ready. Do we have a deal with the audience? Okay, so uh, to get started, I would like to invite actually our, our chair to uh, maybe offer some, some perspective. And of course, the, the, the chair is representing really, very well representing the, the viewpoint of utilities. And, and I think this is critical. Personally, my background for full disclosure, of course, is also uh, a utilities. I think it's very important to set the stage. So please, uh, would you give us a few, a few comments about maybe your, your expectations and the expectations you see from the utility uh, viewpoint? And then we will uh, move ahead. Of course, we will have a thematic presentation. Or if you prefer, we, we have the thematic presentation by Andres. The issue, Andres is not in the room, so we will not be able to interrupt. Let's have this presentation. And OK, presentation. so let's do that. Uh, is it OK for you also? So let's, let's have the, uh, the, the one-way presentation with Andres, who is a, a, a good friend. But of course, he is not there with us. And then after that, I will uh, invite our chair to uh, give us maybe three major key point of the expectations of the utilities. And th this will actually provide some driving lines for the rest of what we'll try to discuss here. OK? So please, if you can run the uh, Andres Carvalho presentation. Hello, hello from Austin, Texas. Happy to be with you all today. I'm delighted um, to be invited and participate, at least via video with you all. And um, unfortunately, I'm not able to join you because uh, we have South by Southwest and going on here in Austin, which is a significant event with 300,000 people. And we had a major showcase yesterday with Texas State at the W Hotel in Austin. It was fabulous. We had some 500 plus people show up. And uh, we have a lot of meetings and a lot of interaction going on this week. So hopefully next time I'll be with you in person. But let me start um, sharing my screen and getting into the presentation that I want you to see. And what I want to do is uh, basically walk you through it and uh, be able to set up the session. Uh, again, it's, it's a, a great honor to be at the India Smart Utility Week. Uh, I think that 2024 is going to be a fabulous year, a significant transformational year. Our session today is all about the utilization of utilities, the utilization roadmaps, and digital twins. And I have the pleasure to lead my colleagues uh, by doing the overview intro to the session, which has some phenomenal state-of-the-art friends uh, sharing with you their knowledge. Uh, my name again, Andres Carvalho, CEO of CMG Consulting and Professor Fellow and Director of Texas State University. And I just wanted to share and set up this session with you about what's going on with digitalization overall. And obviously the utility sector is going through significant changes uh, of how digitalization is impacting their operations. And the big thing about it is the integration, if you will, of many digital technologies from smart metering, sensors, edge computing networks that are supposed to take us to the next level. Uh, of uh, transformation and innovation and uh, reality with enhanced resiliency, enhanced reliability, enhanced efficiency. 
and much, much better customer service. Uh, the adoption of all these technologies are to be guided by uh, strategic roadmaps uh, to move the transformation, the uh, consumption of suitable technologies, uh, the integration of timelines, investments, and expected outcomes in a much more optimized, cohesive way. Uh, and the use of digital twin platform is a critical aspect of this digital shift, offering virtual replicas of all assets, allowing for real-time monitoring simulation and predictive analysis. Something that is really uh, missing in how we run operations um, day to day. Now, why utilities must embrace this transformation? Well, embracing the digitalization of power grids offers electric utilities way too many benefits, including obviously enhanced efficiency, resiliency, asset management, grid modernization, customer engagement, and perhaps the most important one, data-driven decision-making. By leveraging, by leveraging digitalization, roadmaps, and digital twin platforms, utilities can develop strategic plans, deploy innovative technologies, and optimize grid operations to meet the evolving needs of customers, regulations, regulators, stakeholders, in an increasingly digital and interconnected world uh, so that we can function more like an Amazon or any other significant large digital uh, platform in the world. So how do we get there? How do we start? How do we make these things happen? And again, my peers will dive into all these elements in a deeper way and share use cases. But it all starts with a roadmap. Uh, and, and actually, you got to have a framework to build that roadmap. And, and digitalization roadmaps provide utilities with strategic framework for optimizing asset management practices, selecting the best technologies, and improving flexibility and scalability of the power grid network. Digitalization generates vast amounts of data from sensors, meters, and many other grid devices. And by leveraging data analytics tools and techniques, Utilities can attract value insights to support data-driven decision-making processes like never before. The utilization roadmaps help utilities define data governance policies, establish data analytic capabilities, and develop predictive models to optimize grid operations, improve energy efficiency, and enhance grid reliability. Digital twin platforms are uh, gaining momentum as becoming the end-all be-all to map all assets at a utility. And by leveraging the utility twin platforms, utilities can create virtual replicas of physical assets such as substations, feeders, reclosures, transformers, distribution lines, transmission lines, sensors, network gear, and much more. These digital twin platforms enable utilities to simulate different operating conditions, assess performance, and optimize asset utilization, leading to cost savings and improve asset longevity. Now, there's clearly there are some significant challenges ahead that can be overcome, but we must be aware of them. Utility culture is one, 130 years doing the same thing, must change to enable a two-way power flow or multi-way power flow to a two-way data flow or multi-way data flow of how the grid should be managed and balanced going forward at either 60 hertz or 50 hertz. Physical and cyber security, investment in sustainability, regulatory change, and last but not least, better customer engagement. Digitalization allows utilities to engage with customers in a new in innovative ways, empowering them to make informed decisions about their energy usage and participate in the man side management programs. Digital platforms enable utilities to provide personalized energy use insights, offer energy efficiency tips, and facilitate billing and payment processes through user-friendly interfaces, enhancing customer satisfaction and loyalty. Now, there are some significant trends impacting the industry we cannot be ignored. 
And obviously, these trends impact different jurisdictions, regions, and utilities differently. But clearly, overall, renewable energy integration is the biggest one, impacting the bulk grid through transmission uh, and centralized generation. Uh, decentralization in distributed energy sources is the emerging super challenge of balancing the grid at subcycle times. Digitalization and asset analytics is a great opportunity on how we can move from a reactive world to a proactive world, how we manage our power grid and its operations and its in, in, in interaction with customers. Electrification of transportation is sort of the big genie out of the bottle. Uh, EVs are happening, they're coming, they're interconnecting to the grid every day. And they're starting to create a disruption at the edge of the grid that must be managed carefully. Energy storage, it's an answer both at the central station level and at the distributed level to make the grid balance in real time, sub-cycle times. And it should be highly leveraged uh, opportunity for all. Uh, resiliency and grid security will get more difficult as many, many, many devices, millions, hundreds of millions, billions of devices are impacting the grid like never before. Uh, and obviously there will be a lots of regulatory changes and policy initiatives that will change the rules of the game. That will make, uh, you know, some difficulties and some hurdles for many utilities, perhaps be by changing business models, by changing compensation strategies. Uh, another big trend is customer expectations and engagement. Our competition is now the utility next door. Our competition is Amazon or Alibaba or um, you know, the banking industry or the airline industry, or it's all about the customer experience and how customers want to use everything on their phone and have um, instant uh, connection, instant information about their package, the route, the this and the that, and the utilities need to embrace this. Uh, and then last but not least, obviously climate change and sustainability is a big mega trend impacting what's going on in the industry. Now for me and my takeaways is simple. You know, at Austin Energy from 2003 to 2010, uh, we started the first journey of grid modernization driven by a self-created smart grid framework and roadmap that I led. Uh, and we executed that with a world-class integration of powerful technologies from ABB, GE, IBM, Oracle, Cisco, Dell, and Lendis and Gear that delivered the very first smart grid in Austin uh, in the world. And since then, I've had the pleasure to help buy Turkey, Brazil, Australia, and 17 utilities in the U.S., uh, to build their own version of a smart grid. Now, it, it clearly is a journey, clearly it's not easy, clearly there are a lot of complexities and timelines, but it's been, uh, you know, happening. And as I see what's coming and what, when I see looking back, this thing that I see missing the most, unless you have fiber to every element of your own grid today, which some utilities do, uh, not many, but some do, uh, would be the fact that we are missing today uh, broadband wireless for real-time monitoring and control. And I think the answer to that is private 4G and 5G. I think that the meter being the edge device of the utility should be on a private 4G, 5G network and every element that is managing every asset on the grid, sensors, the transformers, the energy storage, the reclosures, the feeders, the in, uh, intel interrupters, anything like that, you know, should be managed on a private 4G, 5G, the utility controls, it cannot be hacked by some third party, Twitter, Facebook user, but is actually controlled and dedicated 100% to the utility. I would hope the countries uh, would embrace the notion of allowing utilities to have their own frequencies, to build their own private 4G and 5G networks, 
uh, so that we can really deliver this sub-cycle time, uh, multi-power delivery, multi-consumption, multi-data management, multi-data consumption, multi-data delivery network that will have hundreds of millions, billions of devices at the edge of the grid, uh, interconnecting, interacting, enabling things like virtual power plants and transactive energy and the like, having every vehicle move to be an electric vehicle uh, and having the ability to do vehicle to grid balancing and as the vehicles sit in the parking lots of their houses or in the parking lots of a Walmart or in the parking lots of an airport. Uh, all this infrastructure is going to be interconnected, interacting in real time. And so it's been a pleasure to give you a quick rundown of this session. And I look forward to uh, getting the feedback from you all. Uh, enjoy your next uh, few days. Uh, and uh, hopefully this session will enlighten you in a big way as my peers come uh, and go deeper into everything that I've shared with you briefly. Uh, I look forward to again um, uh, enjoying uh, India in the future and I wish you all the best. Thank you for having me uh, from Austin, Texas again, Andres Carvalho. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a real pleasure uh, and I will um, stop sharing now uh, and come back to the screen perhaps for one last time and say goodbye and thank you very much. Thank you, Andres, and join me to thank Andres. I will personally convey uh, my, my thanks to, to him. And of course, he has presented very general aspects of digitalization, which is a, a good thing to, to, to uh, warm, up, warm up here the discussion. Of course, he came also with one suggestion about a solution. I think as he is not here in the room, uh, I would put that aside for the moment. Uh, because there are many existing solutions. If one solution was known as being the solution, you see, we, wouldn't have, we would not have uh, had uh, that many people and that many needs. So uh, without any further ado, I think, as we said earlier, let's get started. Let's get the discussion started. Uh, from the uh, utilities perspective, you see, to try to, to frame a bit the discussion and, and the presentation, and I would like to invite our chair, Mr. Benga, to uh, come up, give a couple of directions that uh, we're going to articulate through the presentations of the team here and then of your questions. Please. Great. Thank you, Richard, and thanks to ISGF for this opportunity. This topic is extremely important. And this is more important so because the RDSS scheme which is launched by the Government of India is purely technology which is going to define whether the DISCOMs will be able to survive or not. The first phase of technology which Government thought of was in 2012 when they said that the distribution companies should implement a SCADA system, distribution companies should implement GIS system and these are in distribution companies known as the foundational technologies. Unfortunately, the most of the distribution utilities couldn't understand the advantage of those uh, technologies and that was one reason why these technologies failed in most of the distribution utilities. This time it is metering and metering gives revenue and if this doesn't work, then the financial sustainability of distribution company will be impacted. Now there are a few points which are absolutely essential when a utility think of digitalization. One is that everyone right from the leader to the lineman should be convinced that the technology is going to bring transparency, it is going to bring accountability, hence the decision will be made by fact based on data, not by generalization. If everyone convinced in this line, then the leader is the one who pushed technology and he ensures that these technologies are driven. 
but the leader doesn't know how to implement technologies. In fact, the leader doesn't know what technologies are required. We had this problem in 2002 when Delhi was privatized. We had hired a consultant and we said that we don't know about technology. Please tell us how to implement technologies, which technologies to be implemented, and then which technology will bring what kind of benefit to Tata Power. A consultant was appointed. He spent good three, four, five months with us, with us, understood all processes, and he said, do one thing. You are at minus one level in terms of technology. You first implement SCADA system, GIS system, substation automation system, and a good billing application. These are the four things you do. If you do this, then you will have a visibility on your network. If you don't have this, then the digitalization for your utility has no meaning. So my first advice here is have a good IT consultant. But that consultant should not do a rubbish job. For that, you should have in-house few good IT experts. Those IT experts will work with IT consultant and will define your roadmap. They will help you to buy systems. Unfortunately, here in India, the trust between utility and OEMs is not there. And that is rightly so. Now the one will come and will tell you, buy this. And the moment you will see his solution, you will say, I should buy it because this is going to give me benefit. And you buy that. Someone else will come, will give you some other solution related to some other work. So one is related to, let's say, operation. Other one is related to commercial. That this is my predictive engine, the analysis you will get. You, you, you can find it stealing of power where it is going, please take it. You find it is going to give you benefit in six months' time, you buy it. And you buy three, four systems, you start failing in managing those systems. And when you want to see your processes, how it is to be integrated, you will find that these, these systems cannot be talking to each other. So extremely important is define your digital architecture with help of a consultant. Which system is to be bought, take help of outside if the in-house knowledge is not there. That's the first advice to all of you. RDSS, again I am going back, is pure technology. Because if it is implemented well, then MDM can give you all kind of data. All ki kind of data that where the theft is, where theft is not there. In fact, it can also give you a lot of data how you can optimize your capex, how you can optimize your opex. And even if you have an outage management system, then the system can also give you where there's how many customers are out. So the system is a is, is very powerful system. The good part which government has done and it has learned from past, it, in last <coughs> APDRP, when government realized that these technologies failed because there was not much hand-holding. The technology service provider, they came, they implemented, they ran away, and the system was left to those who were not knowing anything. So this time in RDSS scheme, what they have done, that someone who is installing has to be there for eight years. He has to manage all these systems. DISCOM has to take a step now, and they have to have a good IT team who will be engaging with this RDSS vendor and will be learning and will ensuring that they learn well so that they can do a lot of in-house data analytics to use this system. Because once these projects are implemented, the complexities which are involved in these projects are not known to distribution company. So the second advice, and Richard, the all distribution company should have a solid IT department to handle these big projects. If you have then you will be able to manage these systems, otherwise you will not be able to manage the system. The third, which I would like my speakers to mention here is that how distribution utilities should choose their digital architecture, what are the key points they should consider when they are deciding on the digital architecture, and what kind of system they feel should help distribution utilities. My understanding, because I joined Tata Power as a technology hat, at this stage, distribution companies need 
totally a foundational technology solutions. It doesn't need digital twin with the world which is written here. We are not nowhere to that. Just to give you a one use case, I was interacting with a US company who came out with a signature analysis of consumer electricity consumption. And he was discussing with me and he was saying with this consumption you'll find he has only one AC in his home, but he has three home, so you can use this data and give it to some Chroma or Vijay Sales or Reliance Digital that okay, please go and market with this consumer because he has a need of two more AC because this consumption shows that he has three rooms, but he has only one AC. So I said, please give me this data. Now I will use data actually to check where the power theft is there. Because if he is showing one AC, but he actually may be already having three AC. So I will use this data not for the data monetization purpose, but I will use this data for my revenue maximization purpose. So use cases in India are totally different from the use cases which you have in Western world. Don't compare with Western world on digitalization. We have our own system very differently designed. Our processes are very different. A utility has to engage with IT teams and with OEMs to define their processes and then implement them. So those are the things I think utilities should consider. I will hand over you to Richard to take it forward now. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, Sanjay Banga, because, okay, this is setting the stage and, and the expectation for this uh, uh, session. And I, you know what, I think we should keep on uh, staging what the utilities are looking for, what they experience, and maybe I, I think we're going to go forward and ask the uh, utilities, uh, stakeholders on the dais to, to come and, and, and maybe uh, go in, into some more consideration in this direction so that after our friends here on the dais who are proposing solutions can actually articulate uh, their uh, best ideas and value proposition uh, to show how all of this is, is going to move in the right direction, right? So if, you, if you're in agreement, actually, I will ask first our a colleague from NREL, as is, I would say, sitting just in, in between to give his perspective. And then I will uh, call upon the other utilities uh, representative. OK, let's, let's do that. Bagu. And, and so remember, five, five minutes. minutes. It's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> very short. Sure. I'll certainly make it quick. I apologize in advance if no. I have to, to stand up. No. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. I do have a presentation, but I'll make it quick. I'm not going to use it's it. It's your call. It's yep. your call. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'll start with this, uh, you know, just to wake up the room here. How many of you guys know National Renewable Energy Laboratory? Just raise your hand if you guys. OK. <laughs> This probably needs a quick minute. National Renewable Energy Laboratory is uh, a U.S. Department of Energy National Lab, uh, one of the 17 national labs that are maintained by U.S. Department of Energy to really provide uh, research and solutions, uh, again, not consulting, but research and solutions uh, for advancing the state of the art uh, in, in science and technology. NREL, per se, is actually directly focused on renewable energy, as the name says, and other labs as other missions, but we do lo do a lot of renewable energy. And given the nature of this particular renewable energy, we are very close to our utility friends as well as our vendor friends and uh, try to provide a lot of solutions. I'll certainly try to bring a different perspective because I have seen at least four vendors and four utilities sitting here, and again, they will do a lot better job than me talking about the solutions versus uh, utility needs. I will actually bring in a little bit of a uh, few different uh, perspectives to it so that uh, it's not a repetition. The first and foremost, certainly, I think uh, we are at the turn of the century looking at 100% renewable solutions across the world, uh, whether it's a direct derivative of uh, climate change, uh, 
promises that each country has made. I think US also has a 100% uh, clean energy or net zero target by 2050. The reason I'm bringing that this up is I think Enrel is actually playing a very significant role in really coming up with solutions or I would say roadmaps to really get to these things. What does this really mean in terms of utility planning and uh, future utility investments that will actually get to meet these goals going forward. Again, this session is not about planning, so I'm not going to deeply talk about it, but just want to introduce that because that actually changes the direction of future operations in the utility systems uh, that we are looking at. The other thing I want to bring up is, you know, there was a lot of investment uh, within United States as a derivative of uh, Inflation Reduction Act and, uh, and bipartisan infrastructure law, I'm looking at huge investments both in transmission and dis distribution grid, uh, especially by Biden administration. I think uh, we are looking at modernizing utilities uh, uh, at an unprecedented level, uh, more looking at state, local, territories, all, all, all across the gamut there. Uh, I think uh, the previous thematic presenter really gave a very good uh, overview of what uh, different technologies can be looked at. I just want to say these investments are mostly targeted towards advanced technologies, uh, uh, digitization technologies, uh, all the way from advanced metering infrastructure, advanced distribution management systems, uh, grid automation uh, and load. Uh, um, and uh, more data-driven applications like AI, ML, uh, in, in, uh, in looking at future solutions. But one thing I want to mention is data privacy is key. I mean, we don't want to really go and look at everyone's data and keep it public out there. We just want to respect the fact that uh, we are working with our customers uh, in a very goodwill situations and really respecting their privacy and really coming up with how better we can come up with solutions uh, that are tailored towards con consumers at the same time uh, respecting their privacy across the gamut. Uh, <clears throat> I, will, I will certainly echo some of these things uh, with uh, my other presenters that uh, already spoke. And one thing I want to say, I'm anticipating this is probably something that uh, uh, my uh, colleagues will not uh, probably touch on, but digital twins. I think Enrel has been really working with a lot of utilities on this topic of digital twins, and I'll actually share a few slides, uh, especially in this uh, space of digitization. Uh, so let me jump on to the second slide here. Uh, I think Enrel started an effort uh, called Advanced Distribution and Systems Testbed, uh, which was more targeted towards really understanding the data, IT, OT, integration needs of utilities, and really looking at connecting different solutions with real hardware uh, in a laboratory environment to replicate uh, the real world system to actually evaluate solutions because I know utilities really want to see whether this solution really works and also analyze the benefit of solution at a bigger scale and that's what we are trying to achieve uh, at, at uh, a scale that really matters. And sometimes this also looks at integrating with uh, black box devices like uh, DERs out there which doesn't really are not usual for the distributors to operate uh, and, and take it forward and that's what this test bed is looking at and uh, looking at uh, some of those things. A quick picture of uh, some of the examples of uh, this digital twin. I think what we look at the bottom right graphic there actually talks about uh, recreating utility in a combination, or we call it co-simulation of uh, uh, you know physical simulation as well as physical hardware together uh, to do a co-simulation of both of those and really test that with new and advanced applications uh, uh, with with ADMS or other advanced applications that can be actually integrated with legacy applications like SCADA or OMS or other things that uh, people might already have. The key challenge though is integration with legacy systems. I think utilities certainly are looking at opportunities to really cut costs in terms of how can I really integrate this with my existing data systems. I don't want a vendor coming to me and selling a solution which replaces all the solutions that I have. They would rather prefer a solution that is compatible with their existing solution and really coming up with uh, uh, those things that they're looking at. And uh, here is uh, a flowchart of how we really run these things and uh, try to provide an unbiased opinion of uh, a solution and really provide analysis on uh, specific applications that we're looking at. Uh, I was talking about a lot of applications here. Real quick, I think a few of those, uh, again, some of these are what I call advanced research stage. Some of these are more implementable stage, I think, but I've seen utilities looking at old war applications, uh, distributed energy resource management, uh, uh, more to better look at system reliability at bigger scale, and also AMI-based data-centric applications, the AI machine learning kind of applications, and fault location, isolation system restoration kind of applications. Uh, 
and TND integration and providing services for transmission uh, at, at a bigger scale. I've seen also applications like virtual power plants. I know there is a session tomorrow about it, and also uh, what I would say more aggregator-based applications. These are some of the things that we tested over the past eight years and actually provided good inputs and insights, and there are a lot of publications out there that I can share uh, as, as needed. I think uh, there's a quick example here. I'm going to skip that, uh, but happy to open up for discussion and any questions. Thank you. Hopefully, I stick to the Excellent. time here. Yep. Please, please join me to, 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 to thank and, and congratulate uh, Bagu because, because he, he did exactly what we can expect from all the panelists here. Whatever they have prepared, he was able to use uh, uh, in a sharp way some of the material he respected, actually, the, uh, the rule of the game. And I think he's been illustrating very well what we started to discuss about the fact that there are many different use cases. Uh, and the needs are not, well, utilities have generic needs, but the needs are not the same everywhere in, in the world or even in one country. And definitely NREL is a very credible source of information, uh, trying, testing many things, and also incredibly publishing results in an incredibly transparent way. Thank you very much, Bagu. So let's, let's keep on uh, uh, building, building upon the, the discussion we want to have. And I would like to, to ask here Abhishek uh, to come and, and compliment about the uh, utilities expectations. More, more than about what your utility is doing, right? Try to, to just focus on here is what you're expecting. For of course you're doing many things, of course. But uh, please share with us uh, some perspectives. And you have five minutes. Also, okay. if you have slides, you can uh, use one or two, but not this slide deck. Okay, then I'll go. I'll go with all that. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. Good afternoon to all. Uh, myself, Abhishek Har. And uh, see, uh, we are in a very, we are celebrating this incredible innovation of human mankind, starting from fire, then leaping to then agriculture, then industrial evolution, then writings, then printing press, then it goes to space exploration and uh, renewable resources. Definitely electricity was also there in that whole innovation. Uh, uh, innovation thing in human mankind and digitalization is also one of them so uh, if you see uh, we cannot or we would have never achieved an electric bulb if we would have researched only on the candles so we have to innovate in every era we are here just because of our ancestors have done very well but future depends on us that how we shape this present to make the future better same goes with the utility perspective. Uh, BSES, uh, Yamna Power Limited has also gone through this, these uh, digital uh, digitalization phase from starting from uh, 2002, where it was like download, downloading the uh, manual, uh, downloading the metering uh, data, and we are now here uh, up to digital substations. So I'll, I'll be very specific about what we did in. Uh, Grid substations mainly because uh, many have presented the broader term in terms of digitalization. So I'll, I'll pick up uh, very few uh, innovations we did, and one of them was digital substations we recently did, in which we have used the process bus uh, and converted the analog signals at yard side and uh, just uh, transformed all analog signals to digital uh, signals towards CRPs and send them to SCADA system. It, 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 it really uh, enhanced the reliability of our system. It really enhanced the safety of our system. It enhanced the operational, ex, uh, excellent, uh, it enhanced the oper operational efficiency of the system. Uh, recently, uh, see, uh, when we talk about digitalization, very few, few steps can lead to very big, big changes. I'll, I'll give one example of that that we recently uh, digitalized the, the computation of earth resistance mesh. If you see this hotel also, there might be a mesh 
underneath the earth, which was executed maybe 20 years back, maybe 10 years back. And to understand the condition of the mass, we have to take the manual three spike methods where we can measure the resistance of the mass and according to IS, it should be less than five ohm in substation case and in EHP grid substation case, it should be less than one ohm. So, digitalization can penetrate there also. We have installed one uh, online earth resistance monitoring system recently, which calculates the mass resistance every now and then, 24 by 7, and it prov provides the data to our SCADA center and if the resistance goes beyond 5 ohm limit in substation case, then it provides uh, alarm. If you see the impact of this, this very little uh, distillation innovation, uh, you see the impact of that because every day in India, 36 person get electrocuted due to earthing, poor earthing. If you uh, remember recently also at Chamoli district, Uttarakhand, 16 people died because of poor earthing and this small innovation can save some of the lives. One, one more innovation we did is uh, we used arc flares production system in our system and if you see the data, 10% of fatal accidents in whole world is due to arc flares in electrical utility uh, business. So it is very, very strange that we are still able, uh, we are not still able to uh, resolve this arc flares issues. So you come up with the uh, uh, this solution with Ms. Uh, Snyder and we have uh, installed some uh, like lighting sensors in uh, uh, switch gears and uh, with uh, connecting it with the numerical relays and with that we can again like cut down the tripping time of uh, the, uh, the fault and we can actually uh, save like uh, million of millions of uh, uh, human life. So th these are the small, small steps which we should take so that we can enhance the uh, safety of our system, we can enhance uh, the reliability of the system and we can enhance the operational uh, efficiency of the system. So uh, to close with, we should not be uh, like getting along with the digitalization. We should adopt and thrive with digitalization in coming world. I'll quote Nikola Tesla's uh, word that that uh, the present is due to our ancestors, but future will depend on us. So we have to thrive for this. Thank you. So thank you very much because here you you have illustrated uh, really the uh, social responsibilities of the utilities, and this is a a very primary need. Actually, it's not just even providing electricity, right? So, okay, we are enriching here the, <laughs> the stage and, and the discussion. I would like to, to call our colleague from Centrica to uh, bring some more uh, perspective about the ex expectations of the utilities on digitalization. Thank you, Richard. Uh, so just to introduce Centrica before, I mean, for the sake of the audience, uh, Centrica is a UK-based energy and services MNC. Uh, they, they are the parent organization of uh, British Gas, which has around 200 years of legacy, uh, which is also into energy and services across UK. It is also the parent organization of Board Gas, uh, which is, again, an energy and services uh, company across Ireland. Um, it is also into oil and gas exploration and nuclear power generation. Uh, now, before moving to uh, the digitalization initiatives which Centrica has uh, taken, I would um, basically take a step back and uh, give, you a, give you a perspective in terms of how this whole digitalization journey started. I mean, maybe around 25 years ago or 20 years ago, I mean, the Centrica think tank basically sat down and they had their internal deliberations. Uh, they consulted the government agencies as well, and then uh, along with them, the external consult consultants. And then they basically comprehended the kind of challenges the future would face, I mean, uh, which varies from, let's say, sustainability challenges or reducing carbon footprint or the rising um, uh, uh, prices and growing demand, more electrification across buildings and 
uh, electric vehicles, and then I mean renewables coming into the grid, and then they are, uh, a lot of data flowing in and building more complexity. So considering all these uh, challenges and base and basis uh, uh, and, and making them as the pillars and themes on which they want to build their digitalization solutions, uh, this is how Centrica has gone ahead and built their digital roadmap. In terms of some of the initiatives and some of the uh, digitalization uh, solutions and technologies which Centrica has brought across different uh, geographies, I mean, I would like to highlight, I mean, the IoT solutions, right? So we're in uh, uh, Centrica has come up with this unique patented technology, uh, which are these self-powered uh, sensors, which have got edge computing, and uh, they, these are basically field sensors, which uh, help in real-time monitoring of the assets, uh, and these could be assets uh, across the value chain, I mean, right from generation to transmission to uh, distribution to uh, the end consumers, right? So basically there can be any asset right from your uh, turbines to boilers or there could be uh, transformers or uh, switch gears or at the consumer end even the, um, uh, the equipments, the machineries, the motors. So basically these uh, circuit level sensors, I mean, go at the uh, incoming, um, uh, uh, at the feeder level, at the circuit level and it helps in basically digitalizing these equipments uh, in real time so you start getting uh, data at a, at a very granular level at a 10 second data transmission interval. And so what it does is, uh, uh, and, and what it does is, I mean, it gives data uh, which can basically be uh, analyzed and then there is a machine learning and AI ML platform which helps in uh, uh, analyzing the trends, it ha helps in um, uh, recognizing the patterns, basis which, I mean, one can predict failures, predict uh, breakdowns in advance and take corrective action in advance. Um, it also helps in breaking down the energy consumption, let's say at the consumer end and when I talk about industrial consumers, uh, it, it tries to break down the uh, energy consumption across different assets and where you can identify those energy guzzlers which and, and take correct, take actions to reduce the energy consumption. Uh, it also, these field equipments also help in twinning the um, assets digitally, which again can help in uh, building the dig digital twin models. Um, uh, and, and this is something which Centrica is doing across their uh, new plants. And, and of course, it will take time for some of the older plants to um, uh, acclimat acclimatize to this. Uh, then another technology which I would like to talk about here is the uh, is Centrica is also uh, trying to um, uh, smooth the consumer journey by by bringing in these uh, smart home solutions kit. So in UK what it has done and that is something which we can also learn uh, here in India and, and maybe some of the companies are already doing it is uh, what they are doing is they, they have a uh, app and through that uh, smartphone app I mean they are able to uh, basically digitally control the assets uh, and when I talk about retail consumers here I mean through that smartphone app they can um, uh, digitally uh, switch on a switch off their boilers, right? I mean, uh, again, using smart thermostats, then they can basically uh, digitally uh, uh, plug in the, uh, the pipes on the radiators and try to avoid heating of rooms where, um, uh, where there's no occupancy. Right, so these are some of the solutions and uh, along, with the, along with that on the same app, one can also uh, uh, order engineers and book uh, engineers for servicing of the boilers. One can pay uh, online. So these are some of the solutions uh, on which uh, Centrica is working. Along with it, I mean, I will just like to highlight in maybe last one minute, I mean, there are other technological advancements uh, which Centrica is taking in uh, and these are Centrica is one of the leaders in CHPs, the combined heat and power, and it is also bringing in the uh, hydrogen CHP engines, uh, which are basically driven through hydrogen as well as uh, through the waste heat recovery. Uh, and these are some solutions, I mean, some of these the IoT solutions we have already brought here in India, and some of them are on their way. And uh, we basically uh, strongly believe that, I mean, these solutions and these technologies will definitely help the Indian market. I think I'll, I'll have limited time, so I'll rest my case here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anand. Actually, uh, you, you were here on, on this uh, panel as an hybrid in between the, uh, representing utility needs and also having, having solutions to propose. So, so definitely 
uh, I'm sure if, if Centric has developed the solutions that you mentioned here, it's because you had those needs in the utility part of Centrica. So for our discussion, let's skip first this, but I'm sure everybody, everyone here has understood that you can talk to Centrica if you're interested in their, in their solution. But it's a, a bit different <laughs> discussion from the one we're going to have now, where I follow up with, uh, again, uh, another utility uh, perspective on, on the needs about the digitalization, and I will call Saurabh Kumar from BSES. So, so now you know the drill. <laughs> I am the hourglass. Please <laughs> do, do, the, do the most of your <laughs> Thanks, Richard. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, myself, Saurabh Kumar from BSES Rajdhani, Power Limited. Uh, so, as a utility, our main focus area is to give a better supply to the customer and better service to the customer. So our target is the customer first. Then we need to improve our efficiency as an operational efficiency and as a utility to improve our efficiency to make the business sustainable and enable our workforce with the better tools which can be benefit, benefited for the utility as well as to the customer perspective. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about the digitalization of the processes or digitalization of the utility business processes, so uh, customer, still we have many utility or uh, where the customer footfall is still there, even after the transformation of many uh, business processes or, or, or you know, customer interaction points. So there are certain multiple ways of customer interaction points we have created, whether it's a WhatsApp, whether it is a mobile application, web portal, and other uh, media which we have. But uh, we need to uh, implement those uh, technology area with that perspective that how much interactive we are developing those, uh, you know, uh, th those features, how it is interactive, how it is beneficial to that. In BSES, we have introduced many uh, new, uh, you know, those kind of innovations like we have recently introduced the voice bot feature where the customer is, you know, communicating with the voice bot and the voice bot is uh, basically uh, working on AI ML based you know data analysis where uh, whatever the communication is happening with the, uh, uh, the those those consumers it is uh, giving that particular uh, feel them that it is they are, they are communicating with a human uh, not a not a machine and the way of interacting should be like that so these are the some ideas which we are implementing Another thing is to when we are going into the automization and going into the digitalization, we are adding more devices and these devices are providing the data and this data is very huge to maintaining this data and getting some useful uh, uh, you know, action points out of this data. We need to put the better analytics tool and better you know, AML features which is giving the, uh, some better results uh, out of it. And, and while implementing, uh, you know, a technology, we need to think always about whether these technology which we are implementing are going to sustain for a longer period. So let's say we are going into the RDSS program or a smart metering program where the partners are coming up with the, uh, you know, eight years or ten years of the solutions implementation plan. Uh, whether these application which we are deploying, whether these technology which we are adopting are going to sustain after eight years. So let's say talk about any specific, uh, you know, uh, feature of these, these program, let's say head-end system, whether it is interoperable to all type of meters and it is going to adopt all data which is going to come after some time. Let's say right now we are capturing only the meter data. After uh, home automation, we, will, we are going to capture the other device information as well. So what we are thinking about that? So those perspective always should be on mind when we are, you know, implementing that. Similarly, for the meter data management, whether the meter data management is capable of uh, upcoming meters as well as the older meters. So there is not, there will always be a possibility that we will have the older meter always will be there for certain points, which we may not be able to replace up to some year, some years. So whether this MDM is going to fulfill the need to maintain this data, uh, this data as well. Uh, or we, we have to, you know, uh, again, have a duplicacy of the system. So that is a bigger challenge for a utility to have a duplicacy of the system. We have the multiple applications running to have a same business uh, requirement to run the 
the same kind of solution so getting a same uh, you know getting everything possible uh, with the what whatever we are going to implement we have to always think about that perspective also we we we, we when we talk about that uh, process improvement and process uh, digitalization uh, at bscs we have uh, introduced many other features as well like new connection uh, process we have basically uh, uh, you know streamlined based upon by by thinking the perspective that the customer is not coming to us and the thinking on the perspective the many features or many steps which we take uh, to you know give the new connection to any customer then nobody is visiting our office and uh, the the, the process, many process are also skipped automatically by using aiml let's say document verification is a one step which which was a manual step earlier which we have introduced iml and we are able to automatically identify what is the address in that document whether the document is relevant to that particular step and then process the document to the system without any human intervention again in the commercial feasibility whether there is a in that that particular uh, location where he has applied whether the uh, commercial uh, dues are over there or not that is again through the aml so those steps we can skip uh, in a, in a, fr from the human intervention so like that we can how to automate and uh, utilize uh, the technology to improve our business process and improve our efficiency as a utility that we need to focus upon uh, thanks thanks so much very much, Saurabh, because here you, you've been highlighting uh, really uh, the, the concern of the utilities regarding the, simply the consumers. What should I do that's going to do something for the consumer? But also a key question, uh, which is, hey, <laughs> is it going to sustain uh, past eight years? Right? That's the kind of generic question we have as utilities. One more utility with to, to raise the bar of the expectations before we're going to enjoy actually a, 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 a fireworks of solutions. So I would like to invite Tarun Batra from Tata to actually, you, you have the last call, to really raise one more notch. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, as uh, everybody has talked about the technology, definitely Banga sir has set a right concept that uh, uh, technology which we have implemented in TPDDL is a journey we started. So now technology is a journey, it's not an end state. Now whenever we are uh, going for a technology, we need to also align with our business team. They, and as technology gives us a efficiency and effectiveness, but it also demands the discipline and adoption. When, when we are going to implement a technology, then it has to be process re-engineering has to be done. Whenever we are designing any technology, then business processes has to be redesigned. Then how it technology, each and every parameter will be used in the technology by the end people. In every DISCOM, we have been running DISCOM for last many years, 50 years or more than that. But now that's requirement is that how this brownfield will be gel with the technology. Because when people are doing without technology, they are used to that. That cultural change is also a very effective thing which we need to do it in the DISCOM. That's an area where we need to drill down from the top. Where that approach comes from the top. And that's the thing which we have done it. That whenever we have implemented technology, we need to see that, that it has to be implemented. Then we need to work on the sustenance. That we sustain it. And then we move forward with the enrichment. That how new things, new use cases can be there. All the use cases, we cannot bring it in, bring it in the first instance that all use cases will be coming on the day one. It will not be because it's a journey when you use it, then you experience it, and then you understand the customer expectation, then you modify it, and then you move on. That's the way we go on. Now, another things which we have commit that AI and ML that everybody wants to look for a AI things, that's definitely, it's a, it's a demand of the day, it's a requirement of the day, and it's a future. But for carrying out this activity to get the success, it's very important that we must have a robust data point. Data maturity is the key. If data maturity is not there, then all the AI and results will be a 
not a good thing which will even give you some good results it will give you frustration so that's why it's very important that whenever we are implementing technology we need to work on the sustenance and that's why in tpddl we have implemented many ai ml uh, uh, things like payment defaulter that who are the customer who are going to default in payment it so that you can take action proactively so there we have different data points which we have collected different attributes we have done it and that's why we have developed a model in tpddl and this is one of the example another example is the very critical example and useful example is a vegetation management that to maintain the reliability how you are going to vegetation that you can go for it directly for the patrolling that's a rudimentary and that's a traditional method which we can move on but how smartly we can go it where particular things we need to address it so that we can bring the efficiency and uh, that's that's why uh, we have created a one model which is available on our cloud and that's model can be uh, used uh, and uh, that's that's there which which we can connect offline if required so that's why in nutshell i would say that technology brings effi efficiency but it's also demand discipline and adoption that is very important both things uh, go hand in hand and that's the way uh, i rest my case thank you very much thank you thank you very much because now we have collected uh, I, I think a good set of expectations from the utilities where basically each and every utility first consider that okay uh, their viewpoint they have assets they have responsibility they have to serve customers they have also a social responsibility and uh, they have to uh, respect the investment that have been already made whatever they're going to invest in they have to they one think about the sustainability of of the investment and put in place the change management that is absolutely needed this is what i got from uh, fr from your your presentation and it has been said several times uh, about the fact that it is a journey you see the digitalization is not about uh, uh, from one day to another just using uh, digital technology it is a journey a journey well you know what, what it means you need to prepare it you need to get ready you need to start with first steps going in some directions so so the main issue I captured in what I heard is that uh, this journey, well, if, if, if this journey cannot be carried out smoothly, then there is no way to think about uh, digital twins or whatever. First thing first. And this journey requires a minimum preparation on expectation, goals, different steps to go there Basically, in other words, is having a transition plan. It's about a lot, a lot uh, uh, factor, factoring in the fact that there are a lot of humans in the chain, a lot of humans in the decision makers to be in a capacity to make the investment decisions. Uh, in the operations also, there are habits and, and, and also there is a need to, to train and keep the entire, the entire team in the flow. So, so the, and this is not about technology, but this is the, the real life and this is the first thing first that the utilities are looking at. But of course, all the utilities want to move forward with uh, benefiting from innovation, from new solutions. And this is where now we're going to uh, enjoy actually a uh, select presentations by our uh, uh, partners here on, on the dais about what they can just highlight given the expectations that have been voiced up. So, so it's a balancing act. We are on the same boat. And this is for uh, uh, actually the, uh, uh, the benefit of, of the audience here. So I'd like to call here on the dais, first uh, 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 smart, uh, smart energy and water uh, proposal, I would say. Please.
Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be amongst all of you to kind of discuss a very important topic, which is digitalization in utilities. So in my past, uh, so I almost have 22 years of work experience, which of, out of which 20 has been working for utilities across uh, Indian private utilities in Delhi and Mumbai. So I'll try and bring in both the elements side of uh, the partner in terms of how the digitalization just has to go. Sure. This <laughs> yeah, sure. So uh, most importantly, you know, in the context of where we are, you know, as Bharat in today's context, we all know that the next decade belongs to us in the way that the uh, growth is happening across so many areas. And more specifically, you know, the growth with power consumption, which is like kind of anticipated to grow at more than 6% annually over next decade, would kind of put a lot of pressure in terms of having the right generation capacities created. So while that is being created, the government is also very, very focused in terms of creating the right uh, infrastructure to kind of handle the load smartly. And one of the most important parameter in terms of the digital landscape comes the smart metering program of India. So this is by far the largest program that has been run by any country that we can talk of. And the kind of bandwidth that it has created across the country today is humongous. Uh, apart from that, of course, as Mr. Banga rightly mentioned, the RDSS scheme where the modernization of the assets are being taken up. So that is another part where being smart is one aspect, but being healthy is another important aspect. So a lot of work is happening on making the utilities healthy also in terms of the entire protection system, the, the asset infrastructure system and all of that. And most importantly, the EV side, which is like a, a, a black box currently in terms of the utility preparedness specifically. Now every EV is just equivalent to a normal utility house, right? And imagine that if all utilities start, all people start having their EVs tomorrow, how would that really come and uh, showcase on the grid? And how do you really have right discipline around your uh, digital landscape that you are able to kind of monitor, control, and uh, guide your customers at the end of the day? So all in all, you know, a lot of innovations that are happening in a lot of innovations that are happening in Bharat uh, today, and that brings us to the Atmanirbhar Bharat perspective. So a lot of technologies that really define each and every word in Atmanirbhar Bharat. I'll kind of be limited in my time here and kind of go to the next slide. Uh, we as Smart Energy Water, which is SCW, we provide our utility platforms for uh, to utilities across the globe. More than 400 utilities use our platform and transact through it. So when I say platform, it is being used by the consumers of the utility and also the workforce of the utility. So our fundamental vision is to actually engage, educate and empower each and every of these human element and kind of bring that power back to the utility to drive that digital landscape uh, to the success. And how do you do that? I mean, like, like just imagine I mean, the utility of today vis-a-vis -vis the utility of tomorrow. I mean, today utility has only unidirectional transaction with each of the utilities out there. And within that, you know, uh, the whole ecosystem is not really connected. So, and when you talk of, you know, a concierge model where the, all the, uh, you know, models within the landscape gets interconnected, the whole thing kind of blows up and brings in a requirement of a platform-based approach towards the whole problem statement. So when I say that, I mean, let's kind of imagine that uh, a smart home with a smart plug and with a smart plug having a solar rooftop as well as an electric vehicle. And it is connected to the grid with a smart meter, right? Now, this entire landscape, you know, gets connected to the grid and the utility now starts to kind of see that how the load pattern changes with reference to one solar, the EV load, the intrinsic load of the consumer, the growth of the load of the consumer and driving that part of it. Now, when I say this, this is again a very, very important parameter that as Mr. Banga rightly mentioned that, you know, uh, we need to come to a base level of getting the uh, IT systems right. And beyond that, you have to have technologies coming in. I would like to supplement that point by saying that we also need to have right partners to kind of, you know, garnering support and kind of taking that journey forward. For example, if the partners have done this across the globe for hundreds of utilities, how do you really leverage that part of the learning and kind of drive those things further? So here comes the aspect of the connected uh, 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 platform experience. When we say that connected platform experience, we talk about consumer experience, which is your consumer applications that consumer transacts through which. 
There's a BX side where the utility takes intelligence with that data. There's a workforce uh, experience, which again, where the workforce get engaged. Now you can imagine, I mean, people who are kind of going for complaint management, people who are going for, say, for example, new connection, technical feasibility, and there are many things around it. And most important, in the, I think, uh, before going to the next point, is the intelligence aspect of this data coming in. So you can imagine that, uh, you know, when I worked in utilities for 11 kV feeder, loss calculation, I used to be dependent on the SCADA to kind of give me data and kind of compute it. For distribution losses, I had a separate cell to who would kind of compute the distribution losses and would give it to the field team. For theft detection or fraud detection at a meter level, there was another analytics team who was working on it. And all these three departments or four departments or five departments used to work in a very different perspective of driving their innovations. It worked amazingly well till now. But now that you have smart meters, this data coming in and out to you, how do you really take it with the plug and play to the uh, to the JE or, or to the subdivision officer who can drive, you know, you know, the further leg of improvement with that data. So all in all, you know, these connected platforms are the need of the hour for any utility when we talk of the digitalization aspect. And of course, coupled with the artificial intelligence that comes along with the data. So I think uh, we are very thankful to have our partners in India where we are working with them. And there are many more partners which are currently in the offing where we are kind of helping them on their smart metering journey also. Thank you so much. Thank you, Th thank you very much for accepting to, to squeeze uh, that much information. I think, I think what we have to keep in mind, of course, they have a boost and, and, and you can spend much more time to, to drill into different aspects he's been introducing. But what I keep here as a first insight from the, uh, the, the, the vendors of offers is this capability to, to team up to actually team up, not just sell technology. Team up, team up to actually really understand, customize, even decide in first hand, first hand which experience developed in which country would apply. Because as utilities have said, you see, uh, there are different needs, different use cases. So this is maybe one of the very first responsibilities of the vendors to determine in what they have, uh, what they should pursue and not just sell technology for technology. Thank you, thank you very much. Let, let's continue our journey here today with uh, Sunil Kumar Singh from uh, Lassen and Tubro. So if we keep on that pace, we're gonna, I think we're gonna have a bit of time to do Q and A, please. Yeah, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. So, uh, our LNTDS is basically just started the digital uh, energy solution, and uh, we are more in the transmission distribution, and we are providing the solution for the uh, mostly in the utility sector transmission and distribution. Uh, in fact, I have worked mostly in the G field and more than 20, 22 years in the GE. And we have delivered mostly the distribution utility, especially Tata Power and uh, NDPL, Tata Power Mumbai. Distribution like ADMA solution, first we have implemented in India. Uh, because I work mostly in the transmission sector also. So I have, we have delivered many transmission uh, digitization also. In fact, uh, if you go for digitization part, especially in the transmission sector. So definitely we have done the big, big project when I was in GE. And uh, uh, definitely those are quite good solution in India also, because we have done first time NTMC, okay. So that was also first time in India. And uh, from the digital perspective, actually, if you go in detail with the utility and all the things, what Mr. Banga has so that is rightly say that, uh, we have to also find out the right partner for implementing also. Maybe we can say partner or consultant, whatever things are there. But definitely we required. Like uh, we are working many utilities now also with the state government also. So we understand that a lot of things are required. Uh, we cannot do the copy paste with the, some existing system or whatever things are there. But definitely we required a good thorough or we can say consultant or whatever things are there so that we can design the solution accordingly. Thanks a lot. 
Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It was very concise. I, I think you're projecting a, a very credible uh, image. And also, you have a, a, a very, <laughs> very impressive uh, booth in, at the expo, almost at the, at the entrance. Uh, so, of course, uh, I encourage uh, er, everyone in the audience to pay a visit. And, uh, and, and definitely, uh, your, your company is, is well known. And, uh, and definitely, uh, you're, you're showing, you're demonstrating that it's possible to bring a, a reliable and credible project in time for the cost and uh, complying to the expectations of, of your customers. That's what I, I keep here from this uh, interaction. Let's, uh, let's uh, keep on our journey now with uh, Jagdish Chitre from KIG. KIGG, we are a British company and we work with a lot of uh, British universities like Oxford and uh, uh, Cambridge. So we have developed a concept for energy transition lab, which is primarily based on digital twins. So this technology will just run through fast. It so happened that uh, I did read about somewhere wherein Bill Gates said, Ki investing in renewable energy will make the grid fragile. I think utility people know it better than anybody else. There is a serious challenge, but you cannot live without renewable energy anymore. So we have to manage that challenge. How do we manage the challenge? Again, as you know, in COP28, we talked about energy transitions and increasing the energy efficiency. So a lot of challenges are available. Now, with my 40 years of experience dealing with software companies and with uh, power utilities, what we realized there are no hanging, low hanging fruits anymore. All are taken up. So if somebody comes and says, I have a magic bullet, you buy my software, all your problems are solved, kick him out. There are no magic bullets. You need to do a detailed solutions and try it out. So earlier concept of uh, proof of concept does not exist anymore. People want fast solutions and they want to wrap it up in a least amount of cost. So how do you do it? This is where the digital twin comes in. Digital twin, as it is, encompasses so many things, I don't need to go in there, but we primarily do on three layers. One is an electrical grid, second is a security grid, and third is a communication grid. This is how the digital twin works vis-a-vis -vis the energy sector. What we also realized in COP18 in Birmingham that there was a lot of investment going into Indonesia and other countries for renewable, but nothing was coming to India. So we asked the people, Ki, why are you not investing? So they said, you don't have a credible data and you don't have a road map. So that is what promoted us to start a digital twin in India. We started our digital twin in India in VNIT Nagpur about two years back and we have gained a lot of experience. With Digital Twin, you have a lot of solutions available, but you need to prioritize. So this is what we have created in VNIT Nagpur. This is a little different than most of the other places. What we have is a Digital Twin platform. It is also supplemented by simulations of renewable energy and uh, microgrids. And third is we have a NABA testing labs. Because a lot of data coming out, a lot of analysis coming out of models, and out of uh, AI tools are a little bit suspicious. So you need to test it out in a real-time environment. You need to test out the relays. Everybody says they have a 61850 compatible relays. Everybody has a DLMS, but frankly speaking, utilities do suffer with all this. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to create about 31 labs in India for power utilities. One lab has started with uh, NIT Nagpur. Similarly, we are doing it in Baroda, Bhureshwar and other places, it is the utility who needs this support. And this support cannot be only left to utilities. You need academia as well as industry to contribute. So the lab will have threefold. It will have a participation from the utility. It will be also connected with the academia and also with the industry. This is how it has been planned. And we plan to set up about 31 lab with most of the... Another thing everybody talks about is AI. Frankly speaking, I have put 
enough time in uh, software industry and believe me ai is still not ready not fully ready for utility sector utility by convention has to be ultra cautious about what they do they cannot be experimented too much like defense you always select a proven technology ai is still not 100% proven vis a vis digital twin and other technology is concerned so we need to be little bit cautious and play it safe with digital twin it is a technology of future but ai is still not there in quite a number of cases as you all know like sanjay sir said we have all experimented with uh, guinea pigs of discoms so obviously they are not very happy with us how do we do it the assimilation of technology has been always a issue with the discoms for last 50 years why it is so because the field is not plowed enough the ground is not fertile to take ideas and how do you do it you need to train people so what we do is when we create a lab we also enroll about 25 mtech engineers dedicated for the job of utilities how do we do the transition this is how we can help network operators renewable and all that but primarily speaking the whole concept of we want to collaborate with utilities and create digital labs energy labs where digital transition for net zero can take place thank you thank you thank you excellent because you're showing here actually the holy grail i think this is really what utilities would like to see one day up and running on their assets and of course this will or could or can happen only if everything else we have mentioned first is in place and is, is sustainable and that you can get enough data and that uh, uh, we have the utilities have the capabilities to uh, really host, farm the data and, and uh, definitely also have the capability of uh, real-time communication somehow to feed some simulation programs that will then provide a value. And, and of course, what I like very much in what you presented is that you, you factor in the fact that uh, it cannot happen uh, uh, without uh, actually going to the utilities, understanding what they do, preparing the ground, helping the utilities to prepare the ground. You've been, you, 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 you did not just say, you know what, we have to develop an incredible black box, black box, because as soon as you, as a utility person, I hear AI, to me it's a black box in front of me, first. So, no, what you, you have presented is really how you can actually uh, propose a, a journey to utilities and how you invest along with them to have them getting ready to move forward with that kind of technology. Oh, thank you very much, because you're adding one brick to the vision here that, that we are building all together. And now I would like to, to uh, call uh, Mukesh Wala from GE to, well, bring some more bricks to, to our vision. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. <coughs> So it's a heavy weight. I mean, a lot of expectations and a lot of lot has been said already. So what is left? So good part is, or not so good part is, I don't have my slides. So I'm not gonna stick to just the products. What I'm, what we have, what we're gonna do. So I'll I'll stick to a couple of my notes which I took. So thanks to ISGF, uh, honourable chairman, and our very old epitome of the industry, Richard, and my industry colleagues down here on the dais and the real doers in the field, our audience down there. So thank you very much for here. So, you know, how I'm gonna start, I mean, I know I have five minutes, I'm gonna stick it to two to one kind of uh, things. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll, I'll start with the long back, uh, you know, I, I was sitting with Mr. Banga in his office and uh, I, I went to sell, typically sell, not to propose or not to collaborate. That was a mindset at that time. Cell GIS, Geographical Information System. So he listened to me, he heard me, everything he said. And then he said, Mukesh, stop selling this. Stop selling this product. Sell it to the people 
who can use it with the discipline. If there is no discipline in the utility, don't spoil your image, your product will not work. So ultimately, it was up to the user a lot. We need to you know, educate user to that level that he's gonna use the product with that discipline so that it gives value to me and my organization. That was the first thing which I, uh, I still remember it and I, I do quote it at a lot of places. Thank you for that, Mr. Banga. Now second, I mean, can we go back to bullet cots? No, we cannot. It's, it's done. Somebody needs to reach faster where, wherever we are all running to that. How can we do that? So, couple of indices, what I like to share. So, today we are sitting at about 1200 kilowatt hours of uh, average consumption or per capita consumption in the country. Could be 1200 to 1300 or 1150, kind of that range. And United States of America, which has a sizable population, there are other countries, uh, you know, maybe much bigger uh, uh, indices on that uh, particular kilowatt hours, but their, their population is not sizable like Iceland and all. So United States of America is sitting around 12,000, 13,000. If I'm wrong, Richard, you can correct me, kind of that. And look at this. So that's 10 times, but we are 1.45 billion and they are 330 million. So that's another four to five times added. So this is, even, even this is okay. I mean, I'm, I can accept that, that yes, they are 40 times higher than me, which is okay, which is fine. It's their style of living, it's their style of things. They need electricity for everything. They need electricity to, you know, shave. They need electricity to brush. They don't, they can't do that anymore. They just need to keep it, it moves on its own. So it's okay, I, I, I don't reject the idea. It's using the resources the way you have it, kind of that, but what, what doesn't suit down here is, I mean, I need to catch up. And the, another thing which I want to tell, that world average consumption is sitting at 3300. So being India, being a strong country, having all my money, having such collaborative governments, having all the intelligence, I'm still sitting below the world average. So I hope and the way we see, we will reach to 2,500 by 2030. That's the target or maybe before that, the way we are increasing our industrialization and our use because I do have two kids and they have electric brush now. So I, I, can, I can see the change coming. So that's, a, that's one thing which I, so we need technology. We can't go back. We need digitalization. We can't go back. One more thing which I picked up from here, one from Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Andre, he said one thing, that they did one project in a collaborative way of smart grid with one utility, and that was replicated in 17 more. So one thing that picked my eye was they created their own smart grid. So when they said own, that means it's not common one thing smart grid. It's multiple things. Everybody has their own needs. That's what Mr. Banga also said. You know, what is selling in America, don't bring it here. It will be different. We have our own needs. We have our own challenges and things. And every technology, every technology, so it's, it's a different need. What is required there might not be required. Then every technology, the third part is every technology brings solutions and challenges along with that. So to solve those, those challenges, we need more technology. So that's another irony of art. So like in digitalization, you know, everything is there, but cyber security threat is looming more and more. So what do we bring to table as GE? So we bring flexible, modular, and agile solutions. So what works there might not work here. Another thing I like, I mean, I would not push the utilities and my customers to align to, I mean, my product. I would like to have their architecture, their roadmap, and align my product to that. That's what is our new product, GridOS. So one, one beautiful thing about the product is, 
One, it has the evergreen deliveries. So when we say evergreen deliveries, every seven years you don't need to change the hardware the way you are changing. Every seven years you don't need to port whole of the data. You don't, you have a stable system. One system when it comes to a utility, especially on the OT, and it takes a couple of years to stabilize and then they start reaping the benefits of that. So that upgrades are coming. So we need to make it updates like iOS or the Android rather than the upgrades. We got to have more cloud-based solutions to take care of the hardware needs. So one challenge which I see down here is I would love to have one regulator which puts a lot of pressure on my fellow utility people of the CAPEX and the OPEX and the tariff. If they had heard this, it would have been easier to have those solutions. I'm sure we will eventually lead into that. So we need zero trust solutions. So zero trust is basically nobody trusts anybody. I would like to have that kind of solution when one process is not trusting, checking before sending any data to that, keeping the speed and performances. So zero, zero trust, evergreen deliveries, no more updates, obscure to secure. So those kind of solutions, one more flexibility which we give to our customers and our partners and our associates is one that you know, you have your own use case. You can sell your case, your use case to other utilities around the globe it, if it fits through our GridOS platforms. So thank you. I, I hope I, I did justice to the time. Thank you, boss. Uh, uh, th th thank you very much. I, I thank you very much because first you didn't try to sell one solution here and you don't need it to do it. You have a, you have a great booth. You have a, a, a big name company. No, I, I, more seriously, I, I thank you very much having been blunt here. Uh, and, and this is because we're on a small committee, right? Whatever we say here, you're not going to repeat, right? So, so you've been blunt, and, and this is really what is needed to build a, a trust and credibility in the dialogue, in the necessary dialogue in between the utilities and the vendors. Of course, you mentioned something that it would be good to have regulators here in, the dis in this discussion. Yeah. This is what I do usually. Uh, I don't have time here to describe uh, the mechanism in this uh, very tricky, uh, 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 it's like, it's like a, a, a love affair in between three people, you see, <laughs> not just a couple. Okay, I stop here, you, you, you know what I mean. No, no, I think, I, I think what you, you really, shown is that the utilities need to be able to say stop, you see, I'm not there, I'm not, don't try to sell me something first, I want you to show me what you might have uh, as a solution, but also as an experience that would, you would have developed somewhere else, I don't, I don't care from where it was developed, but real experience that you're proposing uh, me to embrace. And also, you, you mentioned some key words that I like very much as a utility person, you see, it's a modularity and flexibility. I like to see that as an engineer, you see, I, I feel more comfortable if it's not just a one block, one uh, black box. Thank you very much. And now we need to enjoy the uh, uh, last, but of course, not least presentation from Hitachi, which is another very big, game, big, big name here in the game, please. Yeah, very good evening and many thanks to my colleagues on the dais and off the dais. So we already delve into the technology of uh, the digitalization of utility. So now we are coming back to understand from the OEMs like us. So many thanks, uh, uh, Mr. Benga, for setting up this context and uh, it is approximately, I would like to say that uh, almost two hours we are listening about various uh, OEMs and utilities expectation. So based on that, after listening that, I would like to say that I, I would like to uh, very precisely stick on four major topics where I would like to answer it. One is how utility themselves prepare to transform into digitalization. That is the one of the key topic I would like to emphasize. And second one, how you need to focus into the connectivity between the equipments. That is our next one major topic. And fourth one is 
where you need to concentrate by building a strong platform for the digitalization. That is the fourth, third, fourth. And uh, the fifth one where we heard from the many of the speakers is about the data quality. So how you prepare your utility data quality, access to the digitalization. That is uh, another one topic which I am going to talk very and the final one, Mr. Tarun is talking about vegetation management. So how as a Hitachi we can contribute to be a better assessment. This is the one which I am going to talk. So now coming back to how a utility. First of all, as uh, from GE we heard that the prepare themselves, the utility need to understand what is the digital maturity at present they have. That is a very, very key for any kind of a digital transformation. First of all, understanding themselves, where are they? And from there, where they need to scale up. So this is the one thing we need to really understand and then prepare the organization for this change management because any kind of a digitalization in the organization coming with a great change. So the preparing that organization for a great change is another one of the key fundamental for uh, before entering into the digitalization. That is the one aspect I would like to say that this all the utilities before and now allowing the OEMs like enter into that, they themselves do this kind of a study and uh, then make the platform ready and then from there to the OEM to be take to the next level. So that is what I would like to say that. Then coming to, uh, because oh, sorry I might came with a lot of presentation, I thought of it is five minutes, now I thought of directly venture into the topics what we I heard. So now this is the one thing where many things I would like to say that we are preparing understanding the roadmap for the digitalization, three major parameters which I told the connectivity front. One is nothing but the big data. The big data is a very, very important thing in when we are talking about the digitalization. You, you are going to prepare your equipments with the IoT, Internet of Things enabled things. So from collecting the data from all the aspects and coming and dumping into a common area and then that connectivity play a vital role for transforming into digitalization. Where we Hitachi is having a solution called Tropos, where can really give, a, even the line of sight is having a major constraint, the Tropos will play a major role to ensure that the connectivity, seamless connectivity between the equipment is one of the key factor there. So from there, it is going, this data is going and landing up into the machine learning where this analytics will happen, then it will convert into in form of an information where the predictive and preventive kind of a actions that the utility has to take. So this is the th th three major aspect if any utility will themselves need to understand before uh, delve into uh, the digitalization aspect of uh, the, the concept. Then coming to, sorry. Then coming to how you are preparing, how where it is, the strong platform. Preparing a strong, strong platform is the basis of any kind of a, the digitalization process because as we heard just now it, it has to long for a, more than a decade we cannot go for a change in a year on year where how you prepare yourself so here we have a strong platform which we are presenting to the utilities right now based on the need of utility called Lumada so this is the platform where we are offering to the utility which can be built in two ways which is on IT sources and OT sources the IT sources will directly fetch the data from this and go to the data services and from there to solutions. The solutions can be scaled at various level by asset performance management, enterprise asset management, and field asset management. It is depends upon the necessity of the utility because any digitalization cannot be done it in a single phase. It has to be adopted at a phase wise. Otherwise, the collapse, the utility will collapse because as I mentioned that the, the, the change management of the utility is one of the very key prima phase importance for that. So then there, there is another aspect, how the future of the digital, what are the things we can say that the asset performance management, let's consider a utility is having a, DISCOM is having a different kind of a, uh, 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 assets are already there in the system. We are going to convert into IoT based system by adding the accessories on that. So which can be taken from a common sources and finally it will land up into the platform, the base platform where it will be assessed and analytics will be happened and transformed to the big data. So this is what it is going to use the performance and give you an idea about 
how the, your asset is performing, and thereafter, how when you require to do the preventive maintenance, when you require to do the change, that you know this this is the very key and important for the asset performance. And, and now we heard from Mr. Tarun from Tata that regarding the vegetation management is one of the key. So we are now offering a solution right now. It is a satellite-based solution which can really give an idea about the growth of vegetation, how much you need to go and cut and trim the trees or ex considering the sustainability what we are factoring the whole organization. You can really look into that, how this kind of a vegetation management with the support of an external software, we can do that. Hitachi is presenting this software to right now uh, to the across the utilities now. So coming back, the digital team, this is as we heard from very important, I am very going very fast because of the five minutes I need to cover up two more topics. So this is very important. Digital team is the aspect right now. It is going to pre-embedding your, your, the entire system, entire your present network into a digital model, where now one of the key we heard from the people right now, renewable energy integration is one of the key factor right now into the system, how the system will behave. So before integrating itself, you will have a feel that the, when you stimulate this, sorry, simulate this into the, uh, the digital system, the system behavior can be, you can predict it. And you can really do that. This is a wide topic and we are creating an environment by adding the system. So this is the digital tin concept and we have a digital tin software which is called Identity TQ. This is, we already demonstrated in the HVDC in Italy. It is successfully running and right now we can see that there are five major HVDC links between, one is RP800 right now, the Identity TQ we are right now uh, going to implement over there. So. So this is the digital tin concept which can give you an advanced intimation before you implement that. This very early stage right now we are talking. So with that, how we are, yeah, thank you very much and uh, my time is running but still thanks to Richard for there are a lot many things to we are to discuss. But one thing I would like to say in summarize, digital transformation, digitalization is a journey as we Mr. Mr. Richard mentioned. So thank you very much. No, thank you, thank, thank you very much. So, so definitely, you, you've been showing that you have packaged a lot of solutions for some specific issues. Here, you 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 really showcased all about uh, vegetation management, which is really uh, critical because it's causing a lot of problems to uh, to utilities worldwide. And, and also, you're showing that you have solutions that can be demonstrated with some return of experience in, in some country, and, and also you, of course, you have a booth and, and you can show and explain much, much more there. So I think we came to the end of the journey. Uh, very short amount of time, we had two hours uh, to, to actually go through first setting the stage of the expectations of the utilities and, and, and to, to then see how uh, some, uh, uh, solution providers uh, can can respond and and basically I'm not going to attempt to resummarize what we have actually been summarizing progressively after each presentation but but what we can keep globally is that there is a there is a need of collaboration and teaming up and between the the vendors and and, and the utilities and, and, and actually also with regulators and, and uh, also, definitely, we are talking about change management. It's not about technology, because today we are mentioning, uh, okay, we have a digital twin, but next, next year we're going to have something else. And, and actually, underneath, we are dealing with this very issue that I think we have well uh, crafted and, and described here. You know what? We have started, we are right on time but we have started five minutes late, and I would like to propose that we uh, um, actually entertain three questions. And three questions from the audience. So get prepared, here is one question. If there are other questions, okay. One here, one here, one here. We have our three questions. So if a roving, ma a roving mic could go to the audience, please. Otherwise, you, you can come up to the to the podium. It might be shorter. Come over. Is my voice 
Uh, are you going from here? Yep. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so my question is about the cyber security. Okay. Uh, we've been uh, we've been listening to the presentations this morning and also last two hours. I found that the mention of cybersecurity was proportionate, I mean, relatively disproportionate. Uh, we believe that we are going to get more integrated with the global and regional grids. We are more distributed with the digital uh, distributed energy resources and smart meters. And more and more things are digital. I believe the attack surface is increasing, and I believe the impact is going to be even more than ever before. Uh, my question is to Mr. Banga, as a representative of a private utility, sir. Uh, do you think our country is ready for uh, a cyber attack in the current geopolitical situation? Uh, I know that in uh, 2022, we announced a policy document. Where do you think we are as a country? in this regard. So I, so I will talk about uh, mainly from Tata Power point of view and then generally. We had a cyber attack in Tata Power system last year and that, that led to virtually a collapse of all our IT systems, whether we had billing system or meter data management system call center was also down. Fortunately, at that time, our OT system was completely isolated from IT systems and we had a, a, a fair firewall and another provisions. So our SCADA and other operation part was working. And when we checked, we found that it basically the indiscipline in our own processes, which has actually led to leakage of user ID and password and this is how the system has come. Now we don't have, my interaction with most of the distribution utilities is no one is actually prepared for cyber attack. System and processes are still weak and there is an absolute necessity for kind of a regulation on this. Operation is not there. It's not there. It could be at the PGCIL level because that definitely an organization who takes care of everything. But if it comes to utility level, it's not there. And it, 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 it can easily be attacked and for that matter. Now, after we had that shock of cyber attack, we appointed third party agency. It becomes a kind of a routine for us that we have a separate department who keeps checking and they have a system where they keep checking whether the system is actually foolproof or not. And this is what every utility have to do. So I, I, I think to that extent I, I answered your question. If you allow me, uh, Sanjay, as I, I'm spending a, a lot of efforts on, on cybersecurity for, for utilities, uh, my take in a nutshell is that uh, in many places of the world, uh, uh, even the governments, regulators, utilities are just trying to respond to attacks. Respond to attacks. But you know what? <laughs> it's the game. The game is over because you will never be able to just follow attacks and then try to add add stuff. Because adding the stuff is just complicating, and in the end, it doesn't make any sense. The people adding the stuff, they don't even understand why they do it. And, and you, you introduce a lot of uh, a possibility of unreliability in your system. So to keep it short, my, I think the right approach is like playing chess. Don't wait the attack of the others, just be proactive. And how can we be proactive? Actually, it is by design. By design, and, and this, is, this is difficult. But by design, we need to put in place a lot of mechanism firsthand that are non-functional. You see, they, are, they don't respond to any use case. But those are mechanisms such that no one can actually develop enough knowledge on how the system is organized and how the system, uh, where are the loopholes, because 
By design, you need to have a system that is monitoring itself all the time, and that might also change, change, these keys change, is own uh, security features. This is non-functional, but I can tell you this is bringing a lot of complexity within the system, and, and this is needed. I stop here because then we could spend the afternoon on this. Great question, and uh, I, I think uh, uh, we're going to hear and talk much more on that topic. There was a second question. So here, okay, you have the mic. Where is the mic? Okay. Hello, uh, sir. I'm uh, Dr. Jagdish Shivahare, uh, professor and uh, ex-scientist ISRO. Uh, sir, I have a question. Uh, what uh, specific innovation practices, disruptions, and uh, smart decision technologies are being incorporated by today's business leaders to implement the digitalization of utilities to meet the United Nations sustainable development goals in terms of digital world? Oh, this is a very difficult question. And of course it would be, well, that would be a key question to ask to the entire panel and get some different perspective, if you allow me in sake of time, and because now we are a team, so, so I, I'm going to say something, and here the panelists can say, no, no, Richard, stop here, but uh, let, me, let me attempt. Okay, the SDGs, you see, well, you see the badge I have, I have here. You see, it's an IEC badge with the SDGs all around. So I, I think I have a good, a good understanding of all the SDGs. I think is, this should be understood as a tool to organize the dialogue between parties and, and to organize dialogue between uh, government, regulators, uh, associations, etc. Where it's interesting for political appointees to make some choices about goals for their specific region. And this might be very different depending on the regions, which means that they're going to prioritize some of the 17 SDGs. They can come up with, a, well, let's say three. If they come up with the 17, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Come up with the three most important to them. And then it's up to the, to me, it's up to the regulators in each country to, to just say, you know what, for our country, yes, let's, Let's use this as a frame to define goals for our roadmaps, for everything uh, we want to be achieved. So, uh, I don't know if it answers the question. I'd be happy to, to pursue discussion. Uh, Thank you, sir. The, Thank uh, you. cup of coffee. Okay. Third question, please. The third. Okay. Here is the third question, the la and that's the last question. Hello, I am Angad Gupta and uh, representing Lendis Gear here. So my question is also a little bit kind of a generic. Everyone has uh, respected DAIGE has spoken about different technologies, different terminologies and lot of other stuff, uh, including digitalization. But the main focus, main area is about data, data and data. Uh, data is the new oil actually. So can we form it a data into a standardization process so a different OEM, different aggregator can be put into a single solution so the uh, solutions can be globally implemented actually. Okay, so it, it's fascinating because I think, you see, we, we should make note of those questions that, that could be used as a, the theme of other entire sessions here. Okay, you're, you're raising the question of actually what's, what's the value of the data, what, what is the quality of data so that we can extract some value from that data. And, and definitely if we have architectures with a lot of different subsystems, uh, of course, how is it possible to make sure that the, the same valuable data can actually be used by all those applications? I, I, I'm just rephrasing what I think, I guess, through your question, right? So, so standards, yes, they are, they are standards, actually, there are too many, and that's the issue. And, and uh, uh, also, well, it's a bit my, 
my endeavor there. So, so it's all about data models. And definitely when we talk about uh, digital twin, it was not really mentioned, but underpinning digital twins are models. And well, you can, do, uh, you can implement digital twins without, without models, but it would not be a, 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 of a, a lot of value. You need models. And the models needs a lot of data. Different kind of, da of data. It can be, well, uh, op operational data. Uh, and then you would need some real time acquisition of this data so to have some kind of, uh, at the same time, calculations on real time data to even provide a response before it happens real time. OK, to do that, it's possible. It is possible, but this will again require what we said earlier, which is already implement all the great plans of, I would say, to be humble, basic digitization in the utilities. And there was a key word that was pronounced several times and that actually I, I like very much, which is the discipline. Discipline, which, mean, which means having people who, who really are part of a same team and they, they want to have rules and, and they want to be able to actually act upon the rules. And, and you, you see, well, it's, we, we may say, oh, it's just words, it's, it, it's fuzzy. No, it's not fuzzy. It's, it's actually defining processes. And this is the key. So the, 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 du the dual problem of data is processes. Because the data are nothing else than the results of some processes. And, and so now just and st to stop here because I'm not, I'm not starting a new session, but uh, we, we need actually uh, to make a lot of efforts in crafting the processes before we require their implementation. Because as soon as you launch processes, it's over. You, you're not going to change the outcomes and what the people have to understand. It's too late. Right. So I hope it responding. I'd be more than happy in, to, to uh, pursue the discussion. And of course, you have all the panelists here, and they have booths also downstairs, or no, uh, <laughs> here in that direction. And uh, fantastic questions. I, I, really, I really thank the audience for uh, uh, having been uh, teaming up with us to extract the the best value we could from this challenging setting. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, uh, this discussion. Uh, of course, it was a small, small group, I would say, very intimate. And uh, I, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. Uh, Sanjay, do you want to say a close, uh, closing word? And... No, I, I think. Uh, we, we had all the speakers coming out very well. Uh, two, three points which are coming up very strongly. One is, it's a journey. You identify a few cases, you start a project. As you use that project, you find many use cases, and that is how this technology gets matured in, in a company. Second, it, it requires discipline. Uh, particularly, the foundational technologies require discipline, and when you have discipline and you deploy more technology, the discipline is already there, so it becomes much, much easier. And third, we discuss about the in-house capabilities. Unless you have a knowledge of that, and unless you are capable, you cannot actually have a good collaboration with partners, because they partner with you on some strength and it's not just transaction. So if you are good, you will be able to extract better from each and every OM. So I think these are three, four points. Uh, thanks for patient listening and thanks to all the speakers. Thank you. Thank you everyone for, uh, uh, for being such a great audience and uh, being here uh, with us throughout the session and making this session more interactive and insightful. Uh, now I would like to uh, invite Ms. Reena Suri, Executive Director, India Smart Grid Forum on the stage to present the, the uh, uh, memento for the thanks to all our uh, speakers. Welcome ma'am. So uh, first, I would like to invite. <laughs> I would like to invite Mr. Sanjay Vanga first, uh, our chair for the session. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for joining the session today.
थैंक यू सो मच सर वी हैव आर मॉडरेटर मिस्टर रिचर्ड शॉम्बर्ग विद अस थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर मॉडरेटिंग द सेशन सो वेल थैंक यू सो मच सर मिस्टर विजय पन पनपाल्य थैंक यू सो मच सर मिस्टर सुनील कुमार सिंह थैंक यू सो मच सर मिस्टर सुनील कुमार सिंह फ्रॉम लासन एंड टूब्रो थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर ज्वाइनिंग मिस्टर मुरली बगू Thank you so much sir uh, Mr Murli Bagu from NRL Mr Ajit Kumar K7 from Hitachi Energy India Limited thank you so much sir for joining Mr Abhishek Harsh from BSCS Yamuna Power Limited thank you so much Mr Tarun Batra from Tata Power Company Limited thank you so much sir for joining the session Mr Mukesh Wadwa from GE Varnova thank you so much Mr Wadwa for joining the session Mr Jagdish Chitre from Kig Limited Mr Saurabh Kumar from BSES Rajdhani Power Limited Thank you sir for joining and uh, Mr Anand Vardhan from uh, representing Centrica Now I would request all our panelists and Reena ma'am to stay back for a group picture requesting everyone to please come in front thank you so much